Hey guys, I'm Colin and I'm today I'm going to be showing you how to use layer masks in Photoshop CS5. Layer masks are basically like stencils in the sense that when whenever you like for example you have a real life stencil and you paint over it whatever shape the stencil does not cover on the on the surface that you have it on will be painted that shape and everything else won't be painted that shape because you used a stencil. The stencil bl blocked out that paint. A good example of this we're gonna go ahead and open up Photoshop and we're gonna do two things to a certain picture I have of my stepfather lighting up some fireworks. We're gonna go ahead and open up my pictures folder and open up this picture that I currently have in photo that I have manipulated already. I already touched it up. Oh dear. I thought I had the watermark off this one. Oh well, let's work with it with the watermark on it. Alright, so we have this picture. Uh, apparently the spawn of Satan is coming out of the ground. It's actually a black snake. And we have the ability to make, what we're going to do is we're going to make all that orange color, we're going to isolate the orange color from the rest by making everything else black and white. Kind of like Sin City. Or the, that, that, that style, I guess. <laughs> We're going to do two things. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to Select Color Range. Or actually, first before we do that, we're going to right click on Background and then do a duplicate layer. Or let's do Layer from Background and then for good measure, we're going to do a duplicate layer anyways. I'm going to go ahead and lock the, the Layer 0 background. We're going to call Layer 0 Udon. And we're gonna call the layer that we can manipulate elbow. With the elbow layer selected, what we're gonna go ahead and do is go up to select color range. And then with our with our eyedropper or our color picker, whatever you want to call it, we're gonna go ahead and try and pick the orange. Now notice I'm not going right in the middle because the camera the the camera picked up that bright orange light as white instead of orange. So we're going to go out to the sides just a little bit and try and pick up more orange than white. Now we have our orange selected, but what we can do with this orange is we can actually uh, increase the amount of selection area that Photoshop uses. For example, it's called fuzziness. We can have our fuzziness like halfway through at a hundred, and that the more uh, that that means it'll only the the smaller the fuzziness number, the less of the um, of the color in that picture is going to be selected. Your pic your edges are going to be a lot more uh, rough, and they're, they're not going to be as soft the smaller your fuzziness value is. I'm going to increase the fuzziness value because if you look on the original picture you can see some orange on his leg right there. I want to be, be able to I want to make sure and we can see it right here in the uh, preview that we have some of that orange. I'm going to bump it up all the way to 200. Now we have all the orange selected, and while it may not look like it, because you see these marching ants, that's what they're called. You see the marching ants around all this orange right here? And it may not look like it. I mean, you see some marching ants there on this sandal, you see this little dot there, and you see that little dot there. So it may not look like I selected any of the orange on his leg, but I did, and I'll show you I'll show you in a second just what that means. We're going to go down here and click on the rectangle with the white circle in it, and it's called Add Layer Mask. 
Now, let's make the udon layer invisible. Let's hide the udon layer. And haha, -ha, see? So I selected all the orange and you can see it's transparent right there in the middle of that, that firework thing because that was uh, white instead of orange. But you can see right here, do you see that translucent little area right there? That's the leg. We got the leg translucent. If I click and if I click on the layer mask, make sure you have the layer mask selected. To make sure you have the layer mask selected, look for the little frame that sits around the layer mask. So I have the layer mask selected right now. And now I have the layer selected now. Layer mask, layer, layer mask, layer. So make sure you have your layer mask selected. We're going to open up, uh, we're going to do control I. That inverses the whole layer. And for example, if I did control I on the actual image, it would inverse all the color on the actual image. So those parts of the picture are actually translucent or transparent now. That's not what I wanted to do though. I'm going to go ahead and do a control A to select everything in the uh, select the whole area. So you see the marching ants around the entire frame of the picture now. I'm going to uh, hide the, the slices because that really annoys the hell out of me when I can see, see that. The marching ants is around the entire frame of the document. I'm going to do a control C or copy the whole selection because I copied, I just copied uh, the layer mask and not the layer because I had the layer mask selected. I'm going to open up a new layer after I disable the, the layer mask. I'm going to go down next to the layer mask and do create a new fill or adjustment layer. And then we're going to do something called channel mixer. Channel mixer is a great alternative to using desaturate. What desaturate does is it will delete all of the color information. You would go up to image adjustments, desaturate. And now we can't do a desaturate on an adjustment layer because there's no, there's nothing there. It's, a, it's made for doing adjustments. But uh, the advantage of using channel mixer over using desaturate is when you use desaturate you're deleting all of the color information I don't want to delete all the color information because there's a lot of good and there's there's lots of uh, data and color information that we can use to enhance the quality of our black and white shot to make this black and white we want to go up to and click the monochrome checkbox now everything is black and white we're going to increase the the red just a little bit and it does not matter it doesn't doesn't matter how bright your uh, your your orange light is because really it's 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 white it's not orange or the computer is going to read it as as such Now you also want to make sure that right next to, at the very bottom after you're done messing with all these sliders, you'll see total and it says plus 99. You want to make sure that says plus 100, but if it's any more than 100%, you see this little exclamation point right here. Warning, total is greater than 100. You don't want more than 100%. Don't ask me why you don't want more than 100% because I don't know. We're going to open up the layers, layer, layers panel again and then we're going to watch what I do. You hold down alt and then you click the layer mask thumbnail. You click the thumbnail of the layer mask. Now we're looking at the layer mask. Every time you make an adjustment layer, a layer mask is automatically applied to the adjustment layer. Now, because I copied the layer mask of elbow, I'm going to paste what my selection into the channel mixer.
then the deselect, because when I paste it, the marching ants show up again, I do a control D to hide them. So now, what I'm going to do is, oh no, yeah, see, look down here. It just made my uh, orange light kind of black and white instead of color, and that's not what I wanted. I'm going to click the layer mask and then do a control I. Aha! See? Now I have the spawn of Satan and nothing else in color. We can also do other things too, like for example, let's say I wanted to make only the, uh, I only wanted to make my step that, I wanted to make, let's make the skin tones a certain color shit. All right, I'm gonna stop and uh, start the video again, so give me a second. Stop. And then I'm gonna start the video again, like this, one, two, three. All right, let's, I wanna make all the skin tones that, um, show up in color instead of like, I don't know. I don't want, I don't want, I don't want anything but the skin tones to show up in color. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna grab my paintbrush tool and then I'm gonna go ahead and expand my, the size of my paintbrush by using the, the right side bracket. I can use the left side bracket to shrink the size too. Then I'm going to go ahead and paint on some black. Now because I have the layer masks selected, layer masks work in black and white. Anything that is white is, is opaque and anything that is black is transparent. So any, because this is on an adjustment layer, anything that is white on the layer mask the adjustment layer is going to have some sort of effect on. And if it's black in the layer mask, the adjustment layer has not affected that area. We can see right here, because I made the orange area around the spawn of Satan black on the layer mask, the, the channel mixer does not touch it. I'm gonna go ahead and paint in some of the skin tones. And all I'm doing and if you'll notice right here, the only thing I'm really doing is I'm adding, I'm painting on black. I'm telling photo, the Photoshop to not apply the layer mask there. Ew, blue skin. You can do this anywhere too. It's not, you can do this in any layer mask. You can do it in Photoshop. Um, any Photoshop layer that uses layer masks. So let your imagination go crazy. I recommend also, so even if you don't ever end up using layer masks while you're using Photoshop, I do recommend that you do use um, the channel mixer rather than desaturate because I'm not act when I use a channel mixer, I'm not deleting color information. You don't want to delete information from your picture because you're 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 making the picture more you're you're deleting information. That's all there is to it. You're making the the picture more crappy, more it, you're losing quality when you do that. And you don't want to lose quality when you're editing pictures. At least to the best of your extent, you don't want to do that. Now I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to go ahead and do a new adjustment layer. We're going to do threshold. Threshold is really fun. Now with threshold, I can actually pick anything that is on the left side of the, uh, of the histogram. Anything on the left side of the histogram is going to be black and anything on the right side of the histogram is going to be white. So make sure that when you do threshold on pictures um, that the histogram is evenly spaced. You can see in this picture the histogram is not evenly spaced because a lot of the white information on the right side of the histogram is not there.
I like that. There's a lot of detail in the pants, and there's some detail there in the face. Now let's open up the layers panel again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the, the threshold adjustment layer below the layer, um, below the channel mixer. That didn't seem to do much. All right, watch. This is, here's, here's what, something I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and do a copy all on the layer mask for channel mixer and then go down to threshold and paste that layer mask. Whoops. Yeah, see, when you, when you want to do a paste, make sure you do a alt click first and then do a control V. Control D to deselect and let's go back to the picture. See? That's actually pretty cool. I like that. So if you guys have any other questions or comments, let me know in the comments se section below. And I hope you guys have a very, very great day. Toodaloo. How do I stop this? Stop.